Just a couple, couple follow-ups. You said earlier you were representing all the executive departments and agencies. You're representing the president, too, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. President Biden. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes. And the, the, this action was actually brought by the previous administration. Right. Okay. Uh, Justice Sotomayor was asking you about the um, process, and I don't think you described it in full, uh, the process, not written, but the process that occurs in a situation like this, which I assume in all indications are would involve the Attorney General and the Secretary of State and the National Security Advisor and the White House Counsel and probably the President, too. Uh, but is that the normal process for something like this, or do you not want to talk about that? Um, Your Honor, I'd prefer not to discuss the details of internal processes. What were you going to say about the process? Because you were going to say something. Uh, I think I said all I was planning to say, Your Honor. I didn't mean to leave the impression that I left something uh, in the box. But, uh, I mean, just, just to reiterate, I think it is well, I, perhaps what I was not able to say is I think it is well understood uh, in the U.S. Attorney's Office is not that they would need to run this kind of thing up the chain. <laughs> and when it's run up the chain, uh, the chain will, if you'll forgive the um, mixing of metaphors, grow some spokes and will <laughs> consult with the other portions of the federal government that might have concern with a case like this. Um, we don't have uh, an, uh, examples of cases, and, and this isn't one. Uh, certainly, isn't one of them, in which uh, something is just a frolic and detour by some individual uh, special assistant U.S. attorney in some satellite office that only contains that special assistant U.S. attorney. Okay. Last question. Um, this is going to take the opposite perspective of the questions I was asking Ms. Blatt and picks up on Justice Gorsuch's questions. So another way to look at this under the Youngstown is, uh, framework is to think, well, we should, uh, to avoid all these questions that have been coming up that are difficult, we should try to uh, fit uh, this case within the, the statutory scheme that exists and that Congress, in essence, has authorized prosecutions or at least said no immunity necessarily when it's commercial activity has suggested immunity uh, uh, otherwise, and that if the, pre if the executive branch wants more authority than what they could get out of the FSIA's uh, indications that they can go back to Congress. Now, maybe that's the entirely wrong way to look at it, but that's what I was thinking on the other side of uh, how to think about this case. In other words, some, some limits on the executive, and if you want more power, go to Congress. So if Your Honor is supposing that the 3231 question is decided in our favor mm -hmm. and has decided that the FSA does apply, mm -hmm. but the commercial activity exception likewise applies, Correct. I think they, 1330 is, uh, it can't just be... Uh, Assume all that. Why is that not a bad resolution, just thinking about this at a bigger picture level? The Second Circuit's approach there was, you know, kind of no harm. Well, Your Honor, I don't know that as a practical matter we'd have a problem with that. For the reasons I've said, I don't think that's the correct solution. Mm -hmm. But if the court were to do that, um, I think that would and simply affirm the decision below in, in which both courts found that the commercial activity exception applies, I think we'd be fine with that. No uh, systemic problems from that. Well, as I've said, Your Honor, we don't take these things um, lightly. Okay. And so that, that answers yeah. the question. Thank you. Justice Barrett. 